Hi, thank you for joining me today. My name's Yaffa and I'm a product marketing manager in the CloudGuard team at Checkpoint. And today I'm here to talk about how to use CNAP to reduce risk in the cloud. CNAP, of course, is the acronym coined by Gartner and it stands for Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. At Checkpoint, we believe that unifying security tools in the cloud is an important step towards reducing risk for our customers in the cloud. And today we'll expand upon the additional security value that CNAP can bring. Talking to customers who've been using various flavors of our CNAP solution, as well as those of our other security vendors, there's a clear gap between what CNAP has delivered to date, namely unifying everything cloud security into one place, and the value that customers most need, which is to proactively reduce risk in the cloud. When we talk to security teams within any enterprise, they always communicate that they feel outnumbered. With the shift to the cloud, security teams are outnumbered by different kinds of applications with different security risks. They are outnumbered by DevOps teams and DevOps pipelines. They're outnumbered by ephemeral cloud assets, which are impossible for security teams to get their hands around. And they're also outpaced by developer CI-CD pipelines. Security teams are outpaced and outnumbered by the sheer amount of vulnerabilities and risk that are discovered on a regular basis. Working in multiple environments, maybe hybrid cloud environments, security teams are completely bombarded with security alerts. It's true that unification is a great start for them, but on a practical level, they still feel outnumbered by alerts and they're still not fully aligned with DevOps teams. Change is happening at breakneck speed and security teams are not equipped with the tools to keep up. Recent exploits like Log4J or Log4Shell were taking advantage of both the software supply chain and the cracks in security coverage where security teams have many blind spots and are ill-equipped to proactively prevent malicious behavior. The CNAP approach was born from the need to ease the challenges of the security professional by providing security that covers the entire cloud technology stack through the software development lifecycle. You can see on the slide that we've laid out the whole cloud tech stack for you to fully secure the cloud environment, the CNAP principles begin with infrastructure layer security as part of the shared responsibility model. You also need posture management and visibility and intelligence on your control plane. And you also need security to scan for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations on all of your workloads. You also need scanning during CI-CD. In other words, automated security tools for DevOps to ensure that they produce security-centric code. And of course, you need a cloud-native solution to protect your application layer. That's the entire cloud tech stack, everything underpinning your applications and workloads, as well as the apps and workloads themselves. The dotted line that you've just seen appear around the diagram represents the software development lifecycle. And that's another key vector where your customers need to have continuous security. It's not enough to deploy a shift left tool for DevOps. Enterprises need to know that their code repository is continuously scanned. They need to know that there's also security scanning during runtime. So we've laid out what unified security looks like. But now let's try to understand the gap between this level of security coverage and the challenges that security teams are still facing. Let's take a closer look at some of those specific challenges. Even with a unified approach to security, manual configurations of cloud resources mean that there are regularly risks associated with misconfigurations and excessive permissions. With the growing number of security alerts, as the cloud environment continues to grow and mature, security teams don't have the tools to prioritize alerts based on their business impact and there are inevitable human oversight and unattended security issues as a result. The nature of the supply chain and the speed of DevOps means that there are regularly new vulnerabilities and other security risks like secret leakage or malware being discovered. In an environment as complex as the cloud, there's also the inevitable lack of visibility because of the pace of change is so fast and security teams aren't empowered with the right tools to provide deep visibility without relying on other teams. As we mentioned earlier, Alert fatigue is real, and additionally, security teams are struggling to identify the risks that pose the biggest threats to their business because they lack the tools to help them assess the business impact of the huge number of alerts that they face. There are oversights and critical risks which aren't being remediated in time. In general, it's like playing a game of whack-a-mole where security teams are constantly spinning their attention to the risk that they perceive to be the most critical at that specific moment. Identity management remains impossible. And the main challenge is that permissions are still configured manually, set up by DevOps engineers who are inclined to default to an over-permissive approach to assets in an attempt to remain agile. On the other hand, SecOps often has a limited view on the permissions that are needed for different assets in order for the app to operate correctly. And that really talks to the lack of trust between security and DevOps teams and the lack of visibility given to the SecOps teams. There's also no visibility into 
what any given asset's effective policy is, meaning that just by looking at an asset, it's impossible to easily understand what access permissions it has. The next challenge that needs to be addressed is how to get visibility into the runtime environment. And often, teams rely on agents on every microservice, whether container or VM, and this is a very complex undertaking. There's this perception that security inhibits innovation, and that's another challenge when dealing with innovative, agile DevOps teams. Remember that in a situation where an enterprise has developer security tools in place for a shift left security practice, that still leaves a gap with a lack of visibility into runtime, which also needs to be addressed. Speaking of developer tools, many organizations have yet to address shift left. CI CD processes are fast and wait for no one, and it's impossible to properly protect the application or cloud environment without security that's automated and built into the development pipelines. Security needs to be built in from the get-go. The amount of alerts that a security team receives on a daily basis is completely overwhelming. At Checkpoint, our approach is to leverage AI and to weaponize the enormous amount of data that's produced. Because for artificial intelligence, this huge amount of alerts and the holistic approach to detection is a great way to train the machine. The more data we provide the machine with, the more context we give the machine about the application and its use, and the assets and their uses, the smarter and more precise the detection is. And suddenly you'll get actionable insights which optimize the way you're working. So if you think about how difficult it is for humans to prioritize security risks and how difficult it can be to actually wade through all of the security alerts and deal with them in order of priority, imagine the exact opposite to be true for machines. Not only are they not overwhelmed, but they're actually more accurate with the additional information. And this is the approach we've taken to CNAP. So you can see here in the top line that we have the CNAP tools which generate what we call security insights. So your container protection and your CSPM capabilities, all of those pieces produce security insights to uncover misconfigurations, anomalies, malware, and all of those other nasty things that we need to know about. Now let's understand what happens when we pull in additional data sources. One is what we call contextual inputs, which are also produced by our security tools. And we've called the other one business inputs. And that really describes all of the business priorities and the considerations you'd think of when you're trying to make a decision that's best for this specific organization. If you add those two inputs to your security insights, you can suddenly literally run an equation where your attack paths have attack scores and you can have the machine automatically generate prioritized remediation of alerts. Why is that useful? Because finally, we're taking remediation decisions by considering the context of security risks. So I just mentioned risk scores and context, but essentially what we're doing is making sure that we properly understand the attack surface and then assign each attack path with a risk score. The machine can combine these with the business value and can provide each asset with an asset risk too. Once the machine combines the risk scores and the business priorities, the machine can provide automated remediation prioritization where security resources are optimized and focused on the security risks which matter to the business. What we believe at Checkpoint is that it's time for security to take back control. We're moving our customers away from manual decision making and focusing the machine on the risks that matter. Imagine a vulnerability like Log4j on two web servers. One is in a production, a production environment facing the internet and, the other, and, and is also the cash cow for the organization. Maybe it's the ordering application for the business. The second machine with the same vulnerability is a staging machine. So you do want to deal with the vulnerability, but clearly the vulnerability on the machine in staging isn't as high a priority for your business. And that's how security is taking back control. Empowered by AI, security teams can be absolutely confident in the order in which they address security risks. Entitlements, as we mentioned earlier, are a black box or maybe a black hole for security groups. Firstly, it's impossible to establish what the effective security policy is for any user or other asset, because some security policies are applied at the group level and some directly on the asset. So it's critical to find a solution that automatically identifies the effective security policy for every asset in the cloud so that at any given moment, the security team can instantly understand the level of exposure for every asset. A lot of permissions are provisioned by teams who are unfamiliar with security best practice and are unable to assess the exposure they're adding with every excessive permission that they provide for an asset. That's why a zero trust approach is important and why security teams need an automatic enforcement of least privileged access. One of the most 
critical things that you can do to help your customers to consume more Azure assets confidently is to enable them with automated security tools so that they're safe in the knowledge that their code is security centric. Once the shift left is up and running, there's also the challenge of runtime security, and that's not easy to find a solution for. You need a solution that can detect vulnerabilities and malware in runtime without impacting DevOps agility and creating friction with them. But that's really the key to securing the cloud, discovering technology that puts security into a position where they're a partner for innovation and removing the misconception that security in any way slows innovation. So some of you will be familiar with the CloudGuard suite, and for some of you in the audience, you might be partners who have yet to learn about what's going on in Checkpoint's CloudGuard team. But I'd like to take the last few minutes to talk about what Checkpoint is doing with CloudGuard to add more context to CNAP so that we have more information about the cloud and the assets so that as security people, we can leverage AI for smarter, accurate, and actionable outputs. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, CloudGuard is Checkpoint's unified cloud-native security platform that covers the entire cloud tech stack, from the network layer to CSPM on the control plane, and even security for Azure function apps, containers, and the applications and the APIs. Not only do we secure the entire cloud tech stack, but we also provide security and scanning through the entire software development lifecycle with automated tools to scan source code and infrastructure as code in shift left, through to registry and runtime scanning too. And we do this to manage our customers' risk with the end goal of being their partner to stop threats to their business. So what I want to call your attention to today is how we've augmented our CNAP offering so that it really stands out from any other offering in the market today. I can count on one hand how many security vendors can confidently say that they have even two thirds of the breadth of Checkpoint's CloudGuard's coverage. But what really makes CloudGuard stand out in 2022 are the new capabilities that we've added on top of our CNAP platform. We've added effective risk management, which provides AI-powered remediation prioritization, a key component to ensure that entitlement management is no longer a black box. And we've even added agentless workload protection options for those security teams who, for whatever reason, want to avoid deploying agents directly on their workloads. The ability to ensure that the prevention-first approach to cloud is maintained is to prioritize threats in the cloud intelligently. With so many workloads, assets, and DevOps teams, you get so many indications and alerts. And what you really need is direction that puts the business first. Effective risk management tells security teams what risks need to be addressed first. This is achieved by adding business context into the mix so that organizations can focus first and foremost on the risks that matter. The complex nature of the cloud means that it's impossible to accurately identify the access permissions for every asset in the cloud. This opens a whole new door for cloud-based attacks. To support this, you need a key in the cloud which removes risk and is a pillar of cloud security. A great use case for this is when someone leaves the organization and their user is just left idle, unused. CloudGuard's key capabilities proactively flags the unused user to the security admin to ensure that it is not just another vulnerable idle account waiting for somebody to discover during a manual maintenance exercise. Our experience in the cloud has taught us that organizations need different approaches to cloud security. And for some businesses, it's just too complex to rely on the development team to, de to deploy security directly on the workloads. That's why we've introduced agentless workload posture, which shifts security to become an enabler of innovation and agility and not an inhibitor. Checkpoint is a security organization committed to empowering and not inhibiting innovation. To this end, we know that security has to be an integral part of the software development lifecycle. And that's why we're providing automated developer tools to scan source code and infrastructure as code so that security is embedded into the development at the earliest stages. To date, nobody has leveraged the untapped power of context that CNAP provides. With all of the visibility and the rich context that you can glean from scanning the entire tech stack, you can really learn so much. We're telling our customers to demand more from their CNAP vendors who should really be an active partner in proactively eliminating risk in the cloud. And with that, I'll direct you to this landing page where you can learn more about becoming a Checkpoint partner on Azure. Checkpoint is Microsoft's leading Azure security partner and with good reason. So I would recommend scanning the QR code and visiting this page and to reach out to us to learn more about how to sign up as a Checkpoint partner. Thank you so much for joining me today and I do hope that you'll enjoy the rest of the sessions.